In this video, we're going to see how to determine the relative acidity of a molecule by looking at how the conjugate base is stabilized by the idea of electronegativity. So over here on the left, we have HA, which is our generic Bronsted-Lowry acid. We know that Bronsted-Lowry acids donate protons. So if HA donates a proton, right, it's going to lose an H+. Plus, and so these two electrons are going to move on to the A. And so the A now has a lone pair of electrons and a negative one formal charge to form A-. minus. And so A- minus is the conjugate base to HA. When we think about the stability of the conjugate base, the more stable A minus is, the more likely HA is to donate a proton. So if you want to determine the acidity of a molecule, look at the stability of the conjugate base. The more stable the conjugate base, the more likely the molecule is to donate a proton, and therefore, the stronger the acid. We know that the strength of an acid can be demonstrated by looking at the pKa values. So let's take a look at some molecules, look at the pKa values, and then analyze the relative stability of their conjugate conjugate bases. So here we have methane, right? So since all these hydrogens are equivalent, I'm just going to say that this is the acidic proton on methane. It has a pKa value of approximately 48. So methane is not very acidic at all. We look at ammonia, so I'll say that's the acidic proton. It has a pKa of approximately 33. For water, it has a pKa value of approximately 16. And for HF, for hydrofluoric acid, it has a pKa value of approximately 3. And so you can see the trend in pKa values, right? As I move to the right, there's a decrease in the pKa value, which means uh, that HF is the most acidic. So as you go to the right here, you can see that we increase in terms of acidity of those molecules. We can explain this trend by looking at the conjugate bases. So let's think about how to draw the conjugate bases for these molecules. So if methane donated a proton, then these electrons would, move, would, would, would stay behind on the carbon there. So let me go ahead and draw that carbon. So it would have three hydrogens and lone pair of electrons, giving it a negative one formal charge. For ammonia, right, let's say ammonia donates a proton, so these electrons move in there onto the nitrogen, and so the nitrogen is still bonded to two hydrogens. It had one lone pair of electrons, picked up another lone pair of electrons, giving it a negative one formal charge. For water, these electrons would move in there on the oxygen, and so the oxygen would have three lone pairs of electrons giving it a negative one formal charge, and that's the hydroxide anion. And for HF, for hydrofluoric acid, these electrons would move off onto the fluorine, which would give the fluorine a negative one formal charge to make the fluoride anion. So now we have the four conjugate bases drawn, and we know that the most acidic molecule is going to have the most stable conjugate base, right? So that must make the fluoride anion the most stable conjugate base. And when we try to look at the differences between these conjugate bases, right, it has to do with the element that bears the negative one formal charge. So for the first conjugate base, carbon is the element that has a negative one formal charge. For the second example, for the amide anion, nitrogen has a negative one formal charge. Right, for hydroxide, oxygen has a negative one formal charge. And for this last example, fluorine has a negative one formal charge. And so carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are all in the same period on the periodic table. And as you move across, and as you move across the period, you get an increase in the electronegativity, right? So as I move to the right, I get an increase in the electronegativity. And so the negative charge is the most stable on an electronegative atom. And so we can think about that in terms of the definition for electronegativity that we talked about in an earlier video, right? The ability of an atom to pull electrons towards itself in a molecule. So if I go back up here to, um, to hydrofluoric acid or to HF, right? I think about these two electrons, and fluorine is much more electronegative than hydrogen. So it's going to pull those electrons in that bond closer to itself. And so electronegative atoms like electrons. And so that's just a very simple way about thinking about why the negative charge is the most stable on an electronegative atom. They like electrons more than a less electronegative atom. And so we can see that, uh, we can see that trend reflected in the stability of our conjugate bases. And since the fluoride anion is the most stable conjugate base, that makes hydrofluoric acid have the lowest pKa value. And it's the strongest acid out of the ones that we have mentioned here. All right, let's look at, let's look at two more examples.
All right, so here we have ethane and ethanol. And so we looked at these two examples in the last video, and we talked about the difference in their pKa values. All right, for ethane, all right, if I said that's the acidic proton, the pKa is approximately 50. And for ethanol, this is the most acidic proton in ethanol, and the pKa value is approximately 16. And in the last video, we, we talked about the fact that ethanol is 10 to the 34th times more acidic than ethane. All right, so there's an extremely large difference in, um, in the, those pKa values, and so there's an extremely large difference in the acidity of those molecules. And we can explain that by looking at the conjugate bases. Right? So if ethane donated a proton, and these electrons moved off onto that carbon, right? we can go ahead and draw in the conjugate base. So there would be five hydrogens attached, and this carbon right here would have a lone pair of electrons and a negative one formal charge. And so for ethanol, right, if these electrons moved off onto the oxygen after it donates a proton, I can go ahead and draw the conjugate base for ethanol, which is the ethoxide anion. And so there's going to be right, an oxygen here with now three lone pairs of electrons around it, giving it a negative one formal charge. And so when I study these conjugate bases, right, I can see the negative charge um, on the right is on oxygen, which is an electronegative element, uh, versus on the left, right, the negative charge is on carbon, which is not as electronegative as oxygen. And so since electronegative atoms or elements bear the negative charge better, it's more stable, the ethoxide anion, this conjugate base is more stable than the conjugate base on the left. And since ethoxide is more stable, that makes the ethanol molecule more likely to donate a proton, and therefore ethanol is much more acidic, which we can see reflected in the values for the pKa. So look at the molecule, draw the conjugate base, and think about the stability of the conjugate base in terms of what the electronegativity of the atom that bears the negative charge.